out of use. Well, next up at E3, it was Project Cars 2. And we tested the ice driving earlier this year. We're seeing Fuji. We were looking at the rally cross a little while ago. And the Indy car, of course, very topical this year. Of course, Fernando Alonso in his Indy 500. Uh, and of course, this time was the first time we were seeing the console versions as well. And in this video, we've got a bit of footage of the PS4 version to see how the conversion process is taking place. We'll look at more of that later in the video. But first, it was time for an interview with the game director, Stephen, uh, to tell us about the game, uh, where it's come from, where it's going, and some of what you can look forward to. Hello, viewers. Well, now I'm joined by Stephen, who's the game director for Project Cars. Stephen, thanks for your time today. I suppose I, I should start off with uh, Project Cars 1. What did you learn on Project Cars 1? And starting Project Cars 2, you know, sort of the post-mortem, if you like. What did you okay, learn so from that? With Project Cars 1, we set out on a mission similar to what we did in GTR back in the day. We wanted to create an authentic racing simulation that we felt the way that it should be done. So with Project Cars 1, of course, the technology had advanced a lot that allowed us to do physics simulation at a far more detailed level than anything that was possible before. We realized that there were a bunch of franchises out there who claimed to be just authentic driving simulator and that, and we just thought we could do better. Mm. Um, we were accused of biting off more than we can chew in, probably did a little, but mm. we ended up releasing something that we could honestly claim was the technically most advanced racing game on the planet at the time. Um, we're a relatively small studio, it's a huge mm. undertaking, and we pulled it off, and we were very proud of that. We still are. Um, moving forward into Project Cars 2, we learned a lot from how to approach mm. the game design aspect of it, how to make sure that we keep in the design what adds depth and remove what is just noise and just mm. distracts from the experience and keep a focused experience on what it is like to be a race driver in the world of motorsports. Mm. Well, I mean, Project Cars was a, an epic undertaking. I think what was also important about it was it was bringing simulation to console at the time. And I, I thought it was, you know, there was an untested market. You yeah. were striving forward. And I guess with Project Cars 1 and 2, like I say, you've been the decision makers in that sense. You know, you've been deciding yeah. your destiny. So, I mean, Project Cars 1 was a huge game, uh, but we've moved forward with Project Cars 2. There's so much more in it now. The seasons, the, the weather, the depth, uh, you know, are we going to see all the pit crews in this version? Well, you know, tell, tell me some of the new stuff that we're going to be, because we've been seeing so much at every stage. I forget what we have and haven't seen by now. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I forget what you have and haven't seen. <laughs> so, yes, we have all this incredible new technology, Live yeah. Track 3 being at the level, taking our Live Track technology that we've developed all the way back from GTR 1 to the point where it is now we can we can do physics-based seasonal simulation of the weather systems and how that affects how you drive. Because in a real proper simulator, you really have two aspects, right? You have the vehicle part of it, the tires and the physical underpinnings and all that, and you have the environment and where the two make contact is really what it all, boil, all boils down. So we needed to accurately simulate that and we keep on pushing more and more. Because the more authentic we can get it, the more approachable it becomes because it becomes more like what you're used to in real life. So. On top of that, of course, we have all the great new content that we've added, um, the new marquees like, you know, Porsche, Ferrari and yeah. all those guys yeah, that go true. there. Little details that we add to the simulator that all adds up to make a big deal. Simple little things like, I was joking earlier to saying somebody, that one of my great new features in the game is the fact that you have wipers that go at various speeds depending on how hard it rains. And they sound different on the windshield depending mm. on how cold it is, whether it's mm. ice or water on the windshield. Yeah. So it's little details, but it all adds up to the reality of experiencing motorsport for real. Like when you do it in virtual reality in Project Cars 2, now you can do what you do when you typically get in a real car. First thing you do is adjust your seat, change the mirrors. You do all that now. So we, we pride ourselves in that we pay attention to the detail. We do have all the new content. We do have the largest track roster of any game on, racing game on consoles in spite of what others claim. We do have the greatest technology in spite of what others claim. It's nice and sweet that they're catching up and doing what we did in Project Cars 2, 1, but we're moved way beyond that. And yeah. um, multiplayer, one aspect that I'm particularly very excited about and, and proud of is that we now have a decent ranking system that tracks how you race. Mm -hmm. Because this is one thing that a lot of people are very quickly put off from online racing mm -hmm. is they just buy the game, they're excited that it's yeah. an online multiplayer game, they go in online and the first thing they do is run into somebody who thinks it's the greatest idea yeah. to drive backwards and yeah. wreck everybody, right? Yeah. So now that all gets filtered out automatically. Mm -hmm. 
and you can then automatically be match made with people who are like minded and who race like you race and then of course together with that we have all this great stuff that you can now do manual pit stops you have a full pit crew out there in the pit lane you can do everything manually now if you wanted to you can do the rolling stuff from you can do formation lap now so if you didn't want to have your tires preheated and you want to do that yourself you can say give me a formation lap you yeah. can do the formation lap and during that you can warm up the tires yourself do the little you know sideways yeah. snaking yeah. and then do the full lap do the manual cool down lap do your victory lap be proud of you know do a little bit of a show up there you won the race then pull into the pits park your car do the whole thing yourself it's really the complete racing simulation now it's a complete package i know some people moaned a bit because obviously the pit crews were discussed they didn't make it into the last game i don't think obviously people realize the complexity of including pit crews for yeah. all the different car types that are in the game all the different circuits yeah. but you can confirm they are in the game this time they're in the they game and and they also do not appreciate how bad it would be if we did put it in the game it wasn't working properly right absolutely so, so yeah and not only do we have full pit crew in the game they're accurate to the motorsport in which yeah. they are so right. your indie car experience will be authentic with the pit crew and how yeah. they operate in real world Indy, the same when it's a GT sort of race and also throughout history. So if you go do a old Formula A, a Formula open wheel race in the 1960s, the pit crew will look the part. I, do, I honestly don't know how you guys are managing all this, you know, like you say, Sometimes the, weather, I don't know. <laughs> the track technology, the pit crew, the cars. Yeah, something that really interests me is actually multi-class racing. Yeah. You know, we have Le Mans, uh, what is it, next weekend or the weekend coming up mm. and multi-class racing around Le Mans could be super intense. I mean, things like that are really yeah. going to change it up online. They're going to change up the racing yeah. and everything. Yeah, this is a big deal, right? We've supported multi-class racing before, but it was in your traditional career structure. Mm. Now we expose that to you when you do like a quick race. Yeah. And specifically, we do this when you do online experiences. Yeah. So you can now go and create an online race where you have, as an example, GT3, GT4, LMP1 and LMP2 cars. You choose to be in a GT4 car and you can have an online teammate being in another GT4 car. You can do team play. Uh, you can do all of this sort of experience that you would find in real life multi-class racing. And you are now scored based on how you do within your class. So overall, you may finish six, but you first in your class, you get winning points. Mm -hmm. And we support this specifically also in our new online mode, which is the online championships, yeah. right? Yeah. That's a big deal because now you yeah. can have a career style experience in the online world you can play a whole season of races each one configured to exactly how you want to experience it yeah. force mandatory pit stops if you want make it a rolling start race do all of this set up all the classes bring in your um, friends and set them up in teams and have a great fun time over just, the course it's of just it's just it's just so massive I, well i guess the final question really right now is we're seeing how it's developing the game's looking great we're seeing it running here on various different consoles um, what cars do you actually like driving in the game? Because you've got all these, not only have you got the cars, yeah. but you've got enough tracks to actually support the yeah. various different cars. So you can actually run a WEC season. You can actually yep. run a, you know, a, you know, any of these different championships if you want to. But what are you playing right now in this massive behemoth for, of a game? <laughs> yeah. For me personally, I love the new marquees that we brought into the title now. I, I, really enjoy Porsche and it's yeah. great that we have them in now and we have not only the modern Porsches in there but the historically great ones the ones that have raced at Le Mans and all mm. that I love those cars I love racing them in virtual reality yeah, yeah. right because yeah. you got you really get a sense of what they were like how they mm. sounded how they behaved and how they feel inside sitting this little tight well, cockpit I, I will, and doing it on historic tracks well it's funny you say that because I will say that from a VR perspective I was I was racing in the VR and I found myself leaning over to line my wheel up with the with the lines and the curves yeah. and in fact I w afterwards I thought goodness me you're actually leaning like the original drivers were you're leaning to get the car just in the right position yeah. it's funny how the VR literally places you in those cockpits yeah. uh, amazing well listen Stephen thanks for your time today and, and it's a uh, pleasure as always. ever over the coming months we'll look forward to more Project Cars but thank yeah, you yeah likewise so there's so much to look forward to in Project Cars 2 it's barely believable in terms of the scale of the package now we're looking at the actual E3 demo and again I stress to you this is again this is an early build it's a couple of months old a fair few months before the final release build uh, we look forward to seeing how that comes together uh, I was playing with this with a controller at the time uh, it turned out the TV I was playing on was very laggy indeed uh, I went back played it on another monitor and it turns out they have fixed the controller handling and I've since played the full game and it had they have fixed the controller handling but again, it's a very much a, a case of at the moment for me testing different cars. You know, I can't say every single car is going to be perfect, uh, but we're going to test as many as we can when it comes to our launch coverage. But of course, we're looking at the PC version here 
on the E3 build and we're now looking at the PS4 version uh, which you're seeing just in terms of comparison which looks virtually identical at this stage I mean they're still in the process of optimizing it optimizing the frame rate and everything they can get out of it but running on a standard PS4 here obviously those of you with a pro will probably see various benefits or you'll have your boost option in terms of frame rate but either way uh, I was pretty impressed with what I saw as I was just getting used to it again on that same laggy screen uh, I'll show more of this uh, on uh, another screen at some point and I really got the hang of it and did all of it perfectly but sadly none of the stuff recorded here was on the uh, was on the fast monitor either way doesn't matter uh, visually looks great sound is great you know it's project cars I mean that was never a problem with the aesthetics it was always about uh, making everybody happy where the controller is concerned uh, making sure everybody can get into it uh, and just general uh, continuity in terms of the physics that they were working the way they should be and of course everything's been moved forward here uh, to improve it. You can see coming from a rolling start and a direct comparison between both games or, you know, both both formats should I say uh, just to see the core details that you guys can, can analyse no doubt and I'm just going to leave you with a bit of racing and come back later in the video. From the Algarve circuit, we move to Brannock Bray, of course, now in these autumn conditions. It looks really nice in the autumn. It's huge, the lighting. Uh, we've just skipped to the PS4 now. We've seen the PS PC one, and we'll see it in the side by side. But I really wanted to focus on the console version. Again, so far, so good. Uh, still some optimization on frame rate you'll spot here and there. But on the whole, uh, pretty pleased with uh, how it's looking so far. Obviously, the new physics, the live track technology, there's a lot of differences that have been made. So the fact they can get it running and looking good is uh, a nice surprise. Uh, this car was moving around a lot. You'll hear the tires squealing. It's actually, it's actually uh, quite authentic, some of the tire squeals, actually. You often don't hear those on TV coverage because they use compressed microphones and... Uh, you know, it's, uh, it depends where you're sitting, basically, you hear it more in the car. So again, the side by side with the PC, you can see there it's pretty similar. It's a pretty decent comparison at this stage. And again, with all the optimization to do, you know, they've got a few months now to really knuckle down and maximize all the formats. And so there'll be a lot of that going on right now. Uh, amazing miracle work, I have to say, in terms of the amount of work that's needed to be done. Uh, the game was at such an early stage in January this year when we when we played the early build with the ice racing and the uh, you know the, the Fuji course with so many things that weren't finished or in place, so many details and spot effects, and it's all that polish all comes together so quickly in those last few months. And I look forward to. As I say, testing a later build at 
sort of more representative. We'll probably see something like that at Gamescom or in a few weeks before that even. As uh, the game goes gold, probably around a month from now. So not long now for these guys, judging by their release date. Rallycross is uh, altogether more challenging. Now, again, this video was recorded before I got the hang of it. I've now got the hang of it, so I'm much closer to the apexes now. You're sort of riding the apexes around the corner, but uh, it was challenging to pick up. You know, there, there's certainly a learning curve to learning how to do it, but when you know how to do it, it becomes far more straightforward. Uh, the hard part is just being completely in the dark and not knowing how to approach any given surface. Uh, and there's a couple of times here where I, I just sort of nail the throttle and really I just need a little bit of feathering it to get some grip on those corners uh, and there's a complete transition between the dirt and the tarmac it completely a complete opposite way of driving which is interesting uh, in terms of your throttle control so uh, it shows the technique and the detail you need in driving some of these cars and again the comparison is favorable uh, you know for both formats on this demo again you'll see a few little frame rate drops but they're to be expected on this build uh, it's something that obviously there'll be a lot more analysis of from everybody when it comes to the release build in a couple of months time by the way took a bit of time getting used to this again I was on that that controller lag issue but once I was on a different monitor I was racing uh, three to four seconds a lap faster than I am here so a bit frustrating, I couldn't show you those laps because they were much better. Uh, either way, it gives you a visual look at the graphics so far. So that's it from me on this video. Uh, more coverage to come on Project Cars 2 as we have it. Uh, and certainly it's one of the big releases of the year. And I uh, look forward to just, just, just diving in really. The conditions, the cars, the options. So much to look at, so much to see. But um, that's it from me for now. As ever, more soon.